So I'm here to tell you a little bit about the water research that we have been doing in the Institute. We started out three years ago uh, with a, a project in Texas. Uh, in the last six months, we have launched a project in the Merrimack Valley. Uh, this is in collaboration with Joseph Benzaoui, who's one of our research fellows, and Michael Grinspan, who's writing his thesis in the Kilachand Honors College just before graduating in the summer. Um, we also were led into uh, digging in on the Merrimack by Paulina Schwartz, who's one of our fabulous research fellows, and that's also brought us into collaboration with Wendy Heiger Bernays and Beth Haley over at the School of Public Health. So uh, it's a really interesting uh, set of questions that uh, emerge. In Texas, of course, uh, questions are often more about supply and demand, and do we have enough, and what about when there's a drought? Um, in the Merrimack Valley, you've got much, many more questions about quality, um, you know, what's happening when there's a combined sewer overflow, how are people impacted uh, by the water quality. What I wanted to do in these uh, four minutes is just step back and share with you the framework that we found is kind of useful um, in an overarching way in thinking about these questions. So what's the fundamental challenge here? We all tend to take water for granted, especially in Massachusetts. Um, nonetheless, when you start looking, uh, even here in Massachusetts, the Merrimack Valley is not that far away, um, you pretty Pretty quickly start to realize that if you take a closer look, um, the sustainability, sustainability, resilience, and affordability of our water is far from guaranteed. It's not even consistent today, um, even in places fairly close to home. So some of the trends underlying that are you've got many urban populations that are growing rapidly. Our water infrastructure across the US, as well as in other parts of the world, is aging notably, um, introducing a number of quality concerns and supply concerns and then you've got climate change which is making natural supplies more variable it's increasing stormwater surge and uh, that's creating another set of challenges Noting on the uh, right-hand side that uh, you are seeing projections of water prices increasing by 41% in the next five years. Uh, Michael Grinchman was just showing me that if you look at what the average household spends on electricity versus on water, you're seeing a crossover point just in 2024 where we're going to be starting to spend more on water than on electricity. So kind of interesting that in the context of energy, there are many programs to support affordability uh, relatively few on the water side and that is something that's going to need to change. While I haven't been explicit here, closely associated with affordability is a whole set of equity issues. Um, I would imagine it's not a surprise to many people in this room that unfortunately the communities most likely to be experiencing challenges with water quality are those with high environmental justice percentages in their populations. And so that's another part of the challenge. So uh, we've got various tools that we've identified to address this relating to planning, financing, infrastructure, and metrics. What we found in our three uh, three years of work in Texas is that we've dipped into all these different pieces in different parts of our project with the same partner utility. Um, so it's really helpful to be considering all the different approaches. I just want to wrap up with um, this diagram, which is intended to convey kind of a different paradigm. Um, in conventional water management, we think about drawing from a supply, using our water, treating the sewage and discharging it. We think about stormwater separately. We think about pushing it away from our cities and homes as rapidly as possible. Um, there's a new approach, integrated water management, also referred to as One Water, brought in from Australia, which recognizes the connectivity between all these types of water raises questions like, why are we treating water that we use to water our golf courses to a potable standard? How can we use green infrastructure? All those kinds of questions. So I look forward to talking to you more in the on tap section of today. Thank you.